Hello and welcome to a new episode from our Steam series videos from RC Empire and welcome to the amazing Kit 1404 FE1 fire engine from Mamod. In our last video we covered a bit of the history and background of Mamod and took a look at the much older SR1A steamroller. As with the older SR1A this series will be split into two parts. In this video we will be starting off with a quick unboxing, some background information and taking a look at the model and all its components in detail before we go through the replacement of the cracked boiler water level glass and get the engine ready for firing and in the second episode we will be walking through exactly how to fire up this engine step by step and taking a look at it in action. Now I bought this in 2003 from Hamley's toy store in London. Now you can actually still buy this particular model from Mamod for £318. It comes in this really standard modest grey box which measures 490 millimetres 250 millimeters from top to bottom and around 190 millimeters deep. On the bottom here you have the full starting instructions, a few hints and tips and a number of warnings. On the side you have some contact details and some info on what to do if you need spares and repairs. And on the top you've got Mamod live steam models printed in big red writing and unfortunately a big stain where I left a cleaning cloth whilst we were wiping the box. If we take the cover off, you can see we've got this simple polystyrene box holding the model safely in place. Top left, we have the original bits and pieces that came with this kit. So we have a burner tray, which you can see is very different from the old one we saw last time. And this is made from stainless steel, and you can see it has been used a few times. We've got some oil to lubricate all the moving parts. And finally, we have our fuel tablets, and these are the official mammoth ones. Make sure when you light these, you are in a very well ventilated space. And these are simply just hard, waxy, long burning tablets. and they just sit in a tray like that. And if you want, you can put two in at a time to get a lot more heat under the boiler. But of course we will be taking a look at this in a lot more detail and going through how to light these and where they sit on the model in the next video. And finally, before we get onto the model, we have a couple of spare parts here that we bought a few months ago. And what's great with these models is that the parts are so easy to find and are so cheap, as you would expect with the washers and small parts like these. And we've got this little packet here with the new glass that we will be installing and a few other bits of hardware that we'll be taking a look at in detail later on. So, onto the actual model itself. As far as toys and models go, this is one of the more stunning ones. Now, for the most parts of its life, this has been a display piece, and we've only ever used it the odd time during summer, and we've kept it nice and clean. If you didn't actually want to use this as a live model, it is still a very nice display kit. Now, quickly, according to the Mamod website, this weighs in at just under 3 kilograms, at 2,970 grams. The bodywork and metal panels are made from pressed and bent 1mm steel plates, which are screwed or riveted together and as you can see it looks stunning. Mamod have really done a great job with the detail, colours and the finish of this model. This particular model is based on early fire trucks that you would expect to see in the 1920s or 1930s and it's a fantastic scale model. Interestingly this is the pre-built version and you can actually get a kit version of this engine which is kit number 1405 which is slightly cheaper and you can build and screw everything together yourself which is cool especially if you just want to see how everything fits together, learn about fixtures and fittings and build your own steam model. Now quickly just so you can get an idea of the size of this model, from end to end it is about 460 millimeters long. The wheel diameter is around 80 millimeters. The width of these fenders is 25 millimeters. The width from the outside of the tires is around 145 millimeters. The diameter of the flywheel is around 45 millimeters. And the total height is around 185 millimeters. 
And of course on the front here, as with the older SR1A, you've got the pressure release valve where you also fill the boiler up with water. If we work from the top to bottom now, you can see that on the top we have this functional ladder. It's held on with these two butterfly screw type fixings at the back and rests on this cross member at the front. And if you wanted, this does come off completely. And these two big wheels on the back are part of that assembly. And this ladder is made up of two aluminium side rails and brass rungs riveted along its length. And you've also got a little catch lever there to hold it in place. And it just slides in and sits back there. On the front we've got this little brass bell which rings when the fire engine is moving along. And in the middle here, we've got this water hose. As you can see, it's wound around this little drum. And it's got an aluminium nozzle on the end of it. Unfortunately, this is there just for show and it is not functional. And you can just hold the nozzle in this little hole here. On the back, there is this nice angled box type panel work. And in the middle again, we have this simple black bench riveted onto the body. Moving on to the front, there are these cool headlights. Now these are just plastic and painted gold, but they do have a reflective mirror in the front of them, as you can just about see there. Now, moving on to the controls and the moving mechanisms. On the left hand side, as with the SR1A model, we have a forward and reverse lever. Unlike the older model, however, this does not have the same level of speed control as you will see later on in the series. On the right hand side, we have this really nice steering wheel, which is again just plastic, but it is fully functional. Although unlike the steamrollers, this does not have an extended handle that you can use to steer it whilst it's moving. And underneath, we can actually see that steering mechanism and it is really simple. You have the steering column coming from the steering wheel and that connects to this black crossbar and this connects to these extended lobes which are part of the wheel hubs. You can also see that we still have the original label in there and this says batch number 5th of September 2002. Now in terms of the steam system, like the steam roller, we have two exhaust pipes which vent to the bottom of the engine and one input pipe coming from the bottom of the boiler that goes straight into the brass piston. As the steam pushes the piston, power from the piston is transferred across to the other side of the chassis via this drive shaft. And this is connected to the fire engine's flywheel, which also acts as a small pulley. This steps up to a slightly bigger pulley in the middle, so you have now geared down and slowed the output speed. And then on this same pulley, you have a smaller gear that the second belt attaches to. Now again, because this is a smaller pulley, even though it's on the same brass pulley as the bigger one, this will rotate slower than the big one, because it's got less distance to travel in a circle in a given amount of time. So the outer bigger pulley needs to rotate faster to cover one revolution in the same amount of time as a smaller one, even though it's on the same assembly. And therefore, this smaller pulley is going to be moving even slower. And then finally, this connects to a bigger pulley, which is mounted directly onto the rear right hand wheel. And again you've gone from small pulley to big pulley and you've geared down again reducing the final speed of the fire engine. And we will demonstrate this in slow motion in the running video. But this design looks so good and it's one of the fun and engaging features of these steam models. You can actually see how everything works, how the pulley system works using belts to transfer power and how steam from the boiler powers a piston. The wheels here are made of hard rubber and they should last quite a long time as long as they don't start to crack. Everything on this model just looks perfect, from the pulleys to the stamped grooves on the steps and the fenders, and of course this amazing bright chrome on this front grilling cover. Now if we move on to the front, something different to the steamroller we saw last time, this model actually has a visual water level gauge, and this is the glass that we will be changing in this video. Actually, this gauge is upside down. 
The filler water level should be close to the top as you will see in a minute. On the front you can also see that there is a very basic form of suspension there and you can see the wheel arches are pretty flexible. They won't break off but they're not really somewhere you want to pick up the model from and handle it too much. You have these two black C-section type rails that run from the front to the back of the engine and these add rigidity to the metal panels and hold the front wheels on. And that's it in terms of the construction. So for the second part of the video, we're going to be replacing this front water level glass. As you can just see, there's a little crack running across the middle of it. It's not a big crack and I don't think it will affect the running of the engine, but it's nice to change it. If we take a look at this little service bag, you can firstly see the new section of glass that we will be replacing. Now remember that this is a pressure vessel, which is why the glass is so thick and it is there to hold pressure in as much as it is to act as an inspection glass. In the packet, we we'll also have two new brass screws which hold this cover on. We have a new rubber seal which sits behind the glass as you'll see in a second and we also have these two copper rivets which hold the boiler onto the dashboard as you can see there. So to replace the glass you first want to remove this cover. And you can see that this is just a simple thin metal brass cap which holds the glass in place and presses it onto the rubber. And with a little wiggle we can pull the old glass off. Now do be careful just in case the glass is for some reason smashed and you could have little splinters of glass in there. And you can just see there the little crack forming in the middle of the glass. Now interestingly, the rubber on this doesn't seem too bad at all. It's still rubbery, it's not cracked or hard, and for this video we are not going to be changing this. If it does need changing, we will see in the next video when we fry the engine up that it might leak or you will see steam escaping from the front cover. Really, the only place steam should be safely escaping from if there is too much pressure in the boiler is from the pressure release valve at the top of the tank. So get your new glass. Place it into the cover plate and hold it onto the rubber. Get your brass screws and screw the plate back on. Now you really don't need to over tighten this. If steam or water is leaking from it when we go to fire it up, you can tighten it up a bit more then. But do not over tighten the screws because they might squash and deform this thin brass cover. And that is it. It is as good as new, ready to go and looking amazing. It is worth noting that even though this hasn't been used much, this is still a 15 year old model and looks as good as it did from day one. And with good maintenance, this should last a lifetime. So that's it from this video. In the next episode, we'll be walking through step by step how to fill the boiler, fire up the engine and take a look at it in action, in a static test and on the ground. So I hope you've seen something new and maybe learned some new things. Please rate and subscribe and let us know if you have any questions or you would like to see anything else and keep an eye out for our next video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.